This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of a renowned astrologer, Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. For a certain period of time, I was not able to post videos on YouTube explaining astrology. Many of the subscribers were really concerned about this. There were many requests from my subscribers to publish videos on YouTube. Whether it is premium videos or general videos for YouTube subscribers, it makes no difference to me. However, I was not able to publish more videos on YouTube due to my very hectic schedule. That is why recently I took a long time to publish the subsequent videos. In my last video, I explained about the favorable dashas and unfavorable dashas for the native of Sagittarius Ascendant, the professions that can bring success to the native of Sagittarius Ascendant and much more intricacies. In this video, I'm going to explain the effects of the planets in the house of Capricorn. I wanted to repeat this point due to my hectic schedule I was not able to post or publish videos on YouTube on an everyday basis. Definitely I will work hard and I will work towards my goal of publishing videos on alternate days or even daily on YouTube. So far I have explained the effects of the planets from Aries to Sagittarius and now I'm going to explain what would be the effects of different planets in the house of Capricorn, which is the 10th house of the Kala Purusha that signifies the profession. By now, you would have understood my way of explaining the effects of the planets in a particular house. In general, I explain the characteristics of the fundamental plot where the planet resides. That is, I always explain about the characteristics of the house and then I explain the effects of the planets in a particular house. This is the best way to learn astrology. Okay, let me explain the house of the Capricorn. This house is the 10th house of the Kala Purusha. This house signifies the profession. As per the Vedic astrology, we have to check the 10th house of the Kala Purusha and the 10th house to the ascendant in order to identify the profession of an individual. This is the first own house of the Saturn which varies from 270 degrees to 300 degrees in the space of 360 degrees. Saturn is a planet which is very special. Recently I have been publishing a lot of videos regarding Saturn. Even very recently, I have published a video about Exalted Saturn, Debilitated Saturn and Retrograde Saturn as a single video. Needless to say, there was huge reception from all my subscribers. There were a lot of comments and a lot of views for those videos. Well, let me continue the explanation. Capricorn is the first own house of the Saturn. And this is the movable sign of the Saturn. This is the 10th house of the Kala Purusha. The house of Capricorn signifies the Panjabuda Tattva land. In particular, this house represents the marshy lands. The lands in which we do not cultivate. I hope you know some forests are called as swamp forests. Such areas are signified by Capricorn. The very pictorial representation of the Capricorn house is an animal that lives both in land and water whose name is Makar. We can even call it as crocodile. This is a feminine sign. This is a movable sign. This is the 10th house of the Kala Purusha. This is the first house of the Saturn. 
The Panjabuda Tattva that Capricorn house represents is land and this house represents the swampy areas. This house is a combination of land and mobile sign. I have already explained the fundamental characteristics of other houses right from Aries to Sagittarius. Among the classification of male and female sign, the house of Capricorn is a female sign and this is an even sign. Among the body parts, this house represents the knees. In my videos, I also explain which body part each house signifies. Among the body parts, this house represents the knee joint and as well as knees. If there is an issue with the knees or if somebody is limping, the Saturn is the reason. Because Saturn is the one who makes a person to limp. If anybody comes to you for predictions of a knee joint surgery, then you have to check the 10th house of the Kala Purusha and also the 10th house to the Ascendant. Now let me list the stars that are present in the Capricorn house. The stars that reside in the house of Capricorn are right from the second pada of Uttradam that is Uttrashada till the second pada of Avitam that is Danishta. Let me explain in detail. The stars that reside in the house of Capricorn are Uttradam that is Uttrashada, second pada, third pada, fourth pada and all the padas of Tiruvonam, Shravan that is first pada, second pada, third pada, fourth pada of Tiruvonam that is Shravan and the first two padas of Avittam that is Danishta, first pada and second pada. This is the 10th house of the Kala Purusha. This is a mobile sign and the very first house of Saturn. This house is capable of controlling to a certain extent the lethargic nature of the Saturn. The house of Aquarius differs from Capricorn though both houses are owned by Saturn. Because the Capricorn is a mobile sign and Aquarius is a fixed sign. Let us understand the basic nature of this house. This house represents the land as the Panjabuda Tattva and this house represents the swampy land and the pictorial representation of this house is an animal that can live both in water and land, for example crocodile. This house represents all the bad characteristics of the Saturn. This house represents the areas that are unpleasant to our senses. This house represents the areas where there is no hygiene and where the poor people live. This house represents the mortuary, prison, places that are stinking, the hospital, the smell of the hospital, the areas such as the mortuary, the areas that are disgusting as well. The house represents the characteristics of Saturn. Please don't question me if all the native of Capricorn ascendant resemble the complete characteristics of Saturn. I'm explaining all these to you to understand the basic nature of the house and you have to understand the Subhatva and Pabhatva of the houses before making complete predictions. When I explain the characteristics of Saturn or the own houses of Capricorn, some uh, take it uh, very personally and please don't do so. If you ask me whether the natives of Capricorn Ascendant will reflect all these characteristics always, I would say no. I've explained all these fundamentals so that you can understand that how a planet will behave if it resides in the house of Capricorn. This house represents the southern direction. I believe that I have missed this point when I was explaining about other houses. Let me explain the direction of each house now. The Aries represents the east direction, the house which is straight opposite to the Aries where the Saturn gets exalted signifies the west direction. The Cancer house represents the north direction. The Capricorn represents the south direction. Okay, let me reiterate the characteristics of the Capricorn. 
The Capricorn house is a movable sign. From Kala Purusha, this is the first house of Saturn, feminine sign and even sign. This house signifies the regions or areas which are a blend of water and land, that is swampy areas. The house represents the beings that live both in land and water. This house is the last movable sign of the Kala Purusha. The Capricorn house consists of the second pada of Uttiradam, that is Uttrashada, to the second pada of Avitam, that is Danishta. This house represents the body part like knees, the knees of both legs, even the joints of the bones. The Capricorn house also represents the bones. The places where it is stinking or signified by the Saturn, the caves, the flora and the fauna signified by Saturn and all the characteristics of the Saturn will be reflected by this house. I explain all these so that you will understand the Subhatva of the Bhava. I would like to share an important point here and I will teach you more about this in my online classes. Based on the Tattva of the Rashi, the Pisces is the 12th house of the Kala Purusha. This is a point that needs to be mentioned while explaining Aquarius. Anyway, let me explain this point now. Based on the zodiac signs, the Pisces is the last house of the natural zodiac. However, based on the concepts of light energy, the Aquarius will be the last house of the Kala Purusha. When I explain about the house of Aquarius, I will explain more about this. Because the Capricorn and Aquarius are the houses where the sunlight is not received at all. The predominant light giver is the sun. I hope you know, sun is the significator of Atma. He is called as Atmakaraka. The light energy does not touch the houses of Capricorn and Aquarius. The Capricorn and Aquarius are the houses which are not able to receive the light of the dominant giver of the light to the universe that is the sun. The Aquarius is the very last house because it is at great distance from the sun. This is the reason we say that for Kumbrashi or for the native of Aquarius ascendant, nobody is a benefic. I have explored a lot about this and I have written articles in Ungal Jadagam Yoga Jadagama, which literally translates in English as, Is your horoscope a fortunate one? If you read those articles, you will come to know the intricacies of astrology. I am reiterating these points, which is indeed excerpted from those articles. Now, let me explain how the planets will deliver different effects when they reside in the house of Capricorn. In the house of Capricorn, Mars gets exalted and Jupiter gets debilitated. Mars gets exalted in the house of Capricorn and Jupiter gets debilitated in the house of Capricorn. This is the friendly house for Venus and Mercury. I would even say that this is the most friendly house for Venus and Mercury because this is a mobile sign of Saturn. The planets that reside in the mobile sign gains dignity. The mobile sign is a significant one. The first and foremost auspicious mobile sign is Cancer, whose house lord owns only one house. It is the house of the mother as well. If the moon is a waxing moon or if the moon is Subhatva moon, then the benefits are immense. The second mobile house is the Libra. This is the house of natural benefic Venus. The third significant mobile sign is the house of Aries. The house lord is Mars, so this is the first mobile house of the Kala Purusha. And this is considered to be the third significant because Mars is 75% malafic. And the fourth mobile sign is Capricorn, whose house lord is Saturn. And this house represents the characteristics of the Saturn. Well, what is the nature of the house of Capricorn? 
This house represents the characteristics of Saturn, the unhurried manner. The Panjabuda Tattva that this house represents is a swampy land. What does the land represent? The land represents a lot of patience. Patience, patience, patience. How does the crocodile remain inside water for long? What does the crocodile do? It keeps starving and plays a waiting game. The crocodile can even wait for one month patiently for its prey. Though the crocodile starves, it does not approach the interior of the land in order to hunt. The crocodile has a lot of patience in order to wait to hunt for the prey that approaches the place of the crocodile. The crocodile will stay along the banks of the river and it will rest for a long time in order to hunt the prey. It will not move away from its own place. It is such a sluggish one. The word Saturn itself should remind you of laziness. The crocodile is a lazy one. Does it ever run fast? I really admire how beautiful our great sages have conveyed the knowledge through pictorial representation of the houses. The crocodile does not run fast. It walks very slowly. The crocodile is an amphibian which lives both in land and water. It is not really known for its speed, rather it is known for its patience that it maintains in order to hunt for its prey. And what is the very basic nature of the crocodile? It can stay in its own place and it will wait for the prey to approach it. We can see a lot of laziness, sluggishness from the characteristics of the crocodile. All these are derived as the characteristics of the house of Capricorn as well. The native of the Capricorn Ascendant or Capricorn Rashi will be waiting for the opportunities. I hope you get the point. The person will stay calmly for the opportunities to knock at their door. The person will be able to endure the hunger. The person will not go out in search of food and the person would also be lazy. The crocodile will kill the prey and eat which approaches it and which is also reflected in the native of Capricorn Ascendant who will hunt the ones who knocks at the door. Please do not come to the final prediction like all these will be the characteristics of the Capricorn Ascendant. That is the native of Capricorn Ascendant. Based on the Subhatva and Pabhatva, the person will reflect the characteristics of the Capricorn. My objective is to explain the characteristics of the Capricorn. Before making predictions of the effects of planets, in the house of Capricorn, I am explaining the fundamental nature of the Capricorn. The house of Capricorn will reflect the characteristics of Saturn, which is unhurriedness, that is slowness, like crocodile, which is a slow animal, which has the patience to wait for the right opportunity. Once their expectations are achieved, they will not hesitate to ignore those who have even helped them to come up in life. The dirty areas, the disgusting areas, the rivers like present Kovam River in Tamil Nadu, the gutters, the dirty streets where there is no sanitation or hygiene, the hospitals, the areas which are unclean, mechanic sheds especially that are filled with lot of dirtiness, grease, oil, etc. This house reflects the complete characteristics of the Saturn and this is a mobile house of the Saturn. When planets such as Venus and Mercury reside in Capricorn, it is a good house for those planets. Amedam Eridu Sura Nandu Kanni, that is the houses of Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Virgo and Capricorn or the auspicious houses for Rahu. Therefore, when Rahu resides in the house of Capricorn, it is auspicious. There is one more reason that Capricorn is an auspicious house for Rahu because the planets such as Venus, Saturn and Mercury are friendly planets to Rahu. 
Therefore, Rahu will try to deliver its natural effects. This house is the most friendly house of Venus and Mercury and this is the mobile sign of Saturn. The planets in the mobile sign will deliver its natural effects. Having said this, when Venus and Mercury resides in the Capricorn, it is a good house for them. The Capricorn is the house of debilitation for Jupiter. This is the own house of Saturn and Aquarius is the Mool Tricon house for Saturn. I always reiterate a point that for the Malefics, the upper half of the natural zodiac will be the Mool Tricon houses and for the natural benefics, the lower half of the natural zodiac will be the Mool Tricon house. The Capricorn is the exaltation house for the Malefic Mars. A malefic gets exalted in the house of a malefic. Now, let me explain the effect of the planet in the house of Capricorn right from the sun. Let us see the effects of the planet sun in the house of Capricorn. The sun should not reside in the Capricorn because the sun will be in the sixth house from its own house Leo. A luminous planet resides in the house of darkness. Therefore, when sun resides in the house of Capricorn, it is not good. Of course, the sun is in the 10th house of the natural zodiac, that is Kala Purusha. Though the 10th house for the sun is an auspicious one, the sun should not reside in the house of Capricorn. However, I would like to add a point. When a planet resides in a movable sign, it will not lose its strength completely. This is a rule indeed. If only the sun is in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu, there will be unfavorable results. Or when it is in conjunction with both, then there will be immense unfavorable results. What could be the unfavorable results? When sun resides in the house of Capricorn, it affects the status of the father. When sun resides in the house of Capricorn, it affects the significance of the sun, such as father, self-confidence, authority, the leadership quality, the stability and everything. Based on the concept that a luminous planet should not reside in the house of darkness, when sun resides in the house of Capricorn, it is an enemical house as well to the sun. Since the sun resides in the sixth house from its own house, it will affect the house of Leo. When sun resides in the Capricorn house, it can do benefits for only one ascendant, which is the native of Pisces ascendant. If sun resides in the house of Capricorn, it is good for the native of Pisces ascendant because for the native of Pisces ascendant, Sun is the Lord of the Sixth House and when the Lord of the Sixth House is in the Sixth House to its own house, as per Bhavat Bhavam, it is favorable. Therefore, as per Bhavat Bhavam, for the native of Pisces ascendant, when Sun, who is the Lord of the Sixth House, resides in the Eleventh House to the ascendant, it will not do the worst effects of the Leo but there will be some defects in the significance of the sun. The worst effects of the house Leo will not be present since the sun is in the sixth house to its own house Leo when it resides in Capricorn. However, there will be some defects regarding the significance of the sun such as the status of the father, the communication with the father, etc. And the intensity of these effects will be based on Subhatva and Pabhatva of the planet. When there is conjunction of Sun and Saturn or when Sun or Saturn aspects each other or when there is an aspect of the Sun or Saturn between them or when the Sun resides in the house of Saturn or when Saturn resides in the house of Sun, there will be an incompatibility between the father and the son. The incompatibility will be more or less 
as per the subhatva and pabatva of the planet when the sun resides in the house of capricorn or the house of saturn the saturn resides in the house of leo or even when there is parivartan between these two planets there will be incompatibility between the father and the son the luminous planets that should not reside in the house of darkness and a dark planet should not reside in the house of a luminous planet if you understand my concepts of subhatva and pabhatva and sukshma strength then definitely you will understand that sun should not reside in the house of capricorn in case of saturn is in conjunction or in addition to this rahu is also in conjunction with sun then it will affect the status of the father the father will be affected since the sun is the significator of the father this will affect the relationship of the father the person will not be able to enjoy the properties of the father or paternal properties and the person will lose the leadership quality there will not be any favor from the government sectors the native cannot work as an employee in the government sector and there will be some hostility with the government the person will grow hostility with the minister or the government employees or the government officials etc this will definitely happen during the major planetary period or minor planetary period of the sun there will be some loss due to the father or the person will lose even the father all these will be delivered by the sun which is in the 6th house to its own house that to pabhatva sun especially when sun resides in the house of capricorn in contrast to this if the sun is in conjunction with jupiter here or aspected by venus then the effects will totally differ well i have explained when the planet sun resides alone in the capricorn i explained about both pabhatva and subhatva effects of the planet when sun resides in the house of capricorn it will be in the 6th house to its own house which is not a favorable one when the sun is in conjunction with saturn it will affect the father in addition to this when it is in conjunction with rahu it will affect the status of the father the terms with the father the paternal properties and everything related to the father this will happen during the dasha of the sun in general terms the relationship with the father will not be good there will be certain misunderstandings related to the generation gap between father and son now let me explain the effect of the next planet moon when it resides in the house of capricorn when the moon resides in the house of capricorn it will aspect its own house which is a significator of the mother the moon will be in the 7th house to its own house and based on the light energy of the moon you have to make predictions when the moon resides in the capricorn if the moon resides in the tirvonam nakshatra that is the nakshatra of shravan then it is very auspicious and this will happen during the month of adi that is ashada mid july to mid august during the month of adi that is ashada when the moon resides in the star of tirvonam that is shravan it will be full moon and it is considered to be very auspicious this is the avatar day of mahavishnu as per the concept when the planet aspects its own house it grows the house the moon when it resides in the house of capricorn will aspect its own house cancer and it will nourish that house however the moon should not reside in its enemical house capricorn though the planet moon aspects its own house cancer while it resides in capricorn it is not supposed to reside in its enemical house if the light energy of the moon is very less for example during tai pongal that is makar shankaranti that is during the month of paush mid january to mid february 
it will deliver very worse effects and it will affect the mother as well when the sun and the moon are in conjunction during the thai amavasya that is paush amavasya mid january to mid february without any subhatva then the dasha of these planets will deliver very bad effects when the sun and the moon are in conjunction it is called amavasya the thai amavasya happens in the house of makar that is capricorn the moon will not have light energy when it is in conjunction with sun let us imagine that there is no connection of either venus or mercury there is no aspect of jupiter then the moon is in the worst status if jupiter aspects the moon then it will turn the person to have leadership qualities if you observe a person who is born during the amavasya that is paush amavasya and his life seems to be good then definitely jupiter must be aspecting these planets or the planets will be in conjunction with venus consequently the luminous planets such as sun moon retain the light energy please try to understand this having said all these capricorn is a house where the planet sun and moon should not reside the sun should not definitely reside in this capricorn house the moon can reside since it aspects its own house cancer and it is in the 7th house to its own house when the moon has enough light energy and is heading towards a full moon when it resides in the capricorn house it can give benefits to a certain extent there is a possibility that the moon can also reside in the nakshatra trivonam that is shravan which is an added benefit however in any situation for the native of capricorn ascendant when sun or moon reside in the capricorn without any subhatva and remains as pabhatva then it will not deliver any benefits at all having said all these the luminous planets the sun and the moon should not reside in the house of capricorn and the antidote is subhatva of the planets now let me explain about the effects of the next planet mars in the house of capricorn the mars gets exalted in the house of capricorn i often reiterate a point that the malefic planet should not get exalted without any subhatva therefore mars should not be exalted what would happen in case if mars gets exalted without any subhatva the person will not have any forethought at all the person will be very hasty there will be a lot of rudeness in their behavior he will talk without any forethought the person will not hesitate to express what they think though it is really rude the person will not even imagine or think about the consequences of their own action they will not hesitate to beat a person without thinking about the consequence whether it will land themselves in jail or whether he might have to face any legal issue i have written long back in my article quoting a dialogue from a film a hero or a villain will say i will not hesitate to thrash a person and i'm the person who will think about the consequences post thrashing a person this is what will happen when mars gets exalted the filmy dialogue says i will kill and i will think about its consequences later and i will not think before killing a person these sort of characters will be reflected in a person when mars gets exalted in the house of capricorn without any subhatva hope now you understand why mars should not get exalted If you understand my explanation of astrology you can make 100% complete and correct predictions Mars is a malefic that is 75% malefic and 25% benefic The person will be without forethought will be short tempered the person will not hesitate to do unlawful actions in the name of bravery In case if Mars gets subhatva then the person will be working in uniform services 
the person might become a doctor and suppose if the mass is in conjunction with ketu then it gains sukshma strength when mass is aspected by jupiter or when it gets subhatva by venus then the significance of mars will deliver benefits in the profession such as construction medicine sports fire architecture authority etc when mars is with its sthanabala if only it is with sukshma strength and subhatva it will be favorable at least in navamsha the mars should reside in the house of jupiter or venus consequently the mars will get subhatva since mars is 75% malefic when it gets exalted in the house of capricorn without any subhatva it will deliver definitely the worse effects what would happen consequently by this planetary position the person will not have any forethought at all during the major planetary period that is dasha of mars it will deliver very worse effects particularly in relation to the significance of the mars therefore when mars resides in the house of capricorn it should be with sukshma strength with the aspect of jupiter and when it is retrograde it is definitely good when mars is retrograde and gets subhatva then it is auspicious this retrograde and subhatva of the planet will deliver the contrasting effect of the mars i always reiterate the point that the retrograde is nothing but a contrasting state of natural behavior therefore what it happen when mars is retrograde it will lead the person to think a little before what they do before doing any action definitely the person will think about the consequence therefore when the malefic planets are retrograde then in certain situations it is good this is also in a way considered as sukshma strength therefore when mars resides in the house of capricorn it gains a lot of strength by its tanabala it is not favorable at all mars can reside in the nakshatra whose lord is friendly to mars when it resides in the capricorn because the star lords of the house of capricorn are sun moon and mars the stars that reside in the house of capricorn are uttradam trivonam avittam that is uttrashada shravan and dhanishta the planet lords of all these stars are friendly to mars and one among the star lord is mars itself before making the prediction you have to check for which ascendant you are going to make predictions in case if the native is capricorn ascendant and mars resides in the star uttradam that is uttrashada whose nakshatra lord is sun which is the eighth house lord to the capricorn it will deliver very worse effects therefore such a planetary position of mars in the house of capricorn is not good at all please try to understand the position of a planet in a house and the star lord etc in order to make complete predictions having said all these when mars alone resides in the house of capricorn with exaltation status without any subhatva it is not favorable at all it is not good at all if mars gets subhatva or when it is in conjunction with ketu then it is gaining sukshma strength which is really good well i have explained about the effects of the planets such as sun moon and mars in the house of capricorn in this video in my next video i will explain about the effects of the other planets in the house of capricorn and definitely i'm going to share much more intricacies of astrology thank you well this is question time among the two houses of saturn that is capricorn and aquarius which house can control the lethargic nature of the saturn option a capricorn option b aquarius and justify your response please write your answer in the comment section of this video 
The link to Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of the Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available for only Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box. Write your feedback to astro.writeus at gmail.com. Thank you.